Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. And in this one I want to talk about old school gaming versus modern or new school gaming. And I think there's, there's a de definite line between those two. Now I'm not going to talk about the games industry because, well, if you look at history, the games industry, look at like YouTube, right? YouTube used to all be hobbyists because you couldn't really make a million dollars off YouTube. I mean, if you could live off YouTube back in the day, you win, right? Now, there's still, I believe, at least for me, those same amount of hobby YouTubers, but now that they've shown that you can make money, now the bad people show up. This, you know, it's always started, YouTube, people say, I don't know why this, this video on L2 Gaming, but <laughs> I, I, I was about to go on a YouTube rant, but yeah, so if you look at gaming, old school, new school industry, Old school gaming had all those passionate companies, and now those companies are still around, if they are still around. But, you know, the bad companies have come in and kind of ruined some stuff for us, so that's a thing. But today I'm going to talk about gameplay styles and what it feels like. And um, I wouldn't necessarily say old school and new school gaming is the difference between two-dimensional and three-dimensional games. But I think it's more so how you progress through the game... And little other tidbits here and there. So, in an old school game, the big thing for progress is beating levels and getting to higher levels. Because, uh, you know, old school games were separated into a bunch of levels, right? Look at Mario. Mario has a ton of levels. Mario has way more levels than uh, a Call of Duty game, right? Or a Battlefield game. Maybe even not quite a Zelda game. But... Old school games, definitely separated by Zelda. Or, not Zelda. <laughs> levels. Uh, new school games, I think your progress is not so much levels, but it's more so your character and different gear and perks. <clears throat> so if you take, for instance, a game... We'll just use Mario and Call of Duty as an example. Call of Duty has the same... We'll just say in a normal Call of Duty game, 16 maps. And, you know, you play the maps and you get better at it, and you unlock these levels, you unlock these perks, different ways to play. Whereas in a Mario game, it has, let's just say, there's eight times, we'll just say eight times three, for simplicity's sake. Let's say there's 24 levels in a Mario game. There's probably more. But for you, progress is getting through to those next levels, right? Maybe you only get stuck on the third one, and then you finally beat the third one to the fourth one. You finally beat the fourth one to the fifth one. That's kind of like where old school gaming and new school gaming separate, in my opinion. And real quick, I want to back up. Um, I have brothers from the 80s and 90s, and the first, I remember mixed in with my, at the time, modern games, was old school gaming. So I have a little bit of a feel. I'm definitely no expert, though. Like, Honestly, this is my opinion. The opinion of a 20-year-old on 40-year-old and 30-year-old games versus games of today. So take everything I say with not just a grain of salt, but like a salt mine. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's kind of the main separation. So Mario, you know, a lot of progress, dying and restarting. Um, Zelda, not really dying and restarting, but still the progress is the levels. You know, you get to experience more of the game in the form of levels. Whereas modern games, you get to experience it more with gear. Even a game like Mega Man, right? That game is kind of so much gear, but more so like levels. Now, another thing that I noticed between older games and newer games is the way you unlock things, okay? Uh, new Modern games... They give you a direct path to unlocking a lot of stuff, okay? Um, and in older games, they will not tell you how to unlock stuff, right? Now, we do have the internet, so I kind of think this is a change that was going to happen. But if you've ever played an old Mario game, and I keep using Mario as an example, or an old Zelda game, you know about secrets. Even Zelda games today, secrets, right? That's like Mario, do you know where all the these secret blocks are, secret lives, secret power-ups? Whereas a modern game, 
is how do I complete all these challenges? You know, how it tells you all of the challenges and you got to complete them, right? If you look at Battlefield 5, okay, or Rainbow Six Siege, they tell you how to do all the challenges, but they kind of skip that step so then it gives you more time to figure out how to do it your way, right? So they kind of skip that step. And I don't know why this is a thing that older games are just, they won't tell you, and new games they will. Probably to keep you looking for stuff. Me, I'm indifferent about which one I like. I say, for me, uh, at the end of the day, the old school and new school gaming, if you want an old school style game, that's great. If you do that, you have to make it work, you know? An old school game doesn't have to be hard and you don't have to have three lives and you don't have to die all the time and you don't have to have the levels and worlds and stuff like the new zelda game breath of the wild just from watching people play it that's a really good example of an old school game like it's just like okay there you go you know and it doesn't kill you all the time i mean you can still die obviously but you don't like have three hearts and you die 20 million times to learn how to beat a boss you know it just doesn't happen and you know if you go for a modern game make it work you know jam pack it full of challenges that people want to complete you know uh i don't want to like call of duty okay i know i use this a lot but i don't want a challenge where it's like get 10,000 kills with a molotov cocktail right that that if you played a call of duty game that's a lot of kills. That's like too much. That's too many kills, you know? They need to be reasonable and they need to give you worthwhile rewards as well. Don't just make it, um, you know, you unlock 10 different pieces of tape to put on your CD or something like that, you know? Costumes and outfits and moves and maybe even weapons. Those are all cool things to unlock. But, guys, that's my take on it. A very broad take. I used Mario and Call of Duty as examples. Probably not the best examples, but let me know what you think about it in the comments below. What would you say old school versus new school gaming is? Um, of course, you know, the game industry is one thing. I just kind of focus more on the styles. Gaming industry is, well, as as we go, you know, 2020, 2021, 2022... Of course, there's going to be the corrupted people, but there's still going to be good game publishers, and it's always nice to keep an eye out for them. So, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or Instagram post of whatever I said to make.